What's happening guys? Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So tonight we're going to take a look at the November 15th edition of Impact. If this is your first time to the page, be sure to subscribe and hit that notify bell. Try and hit that 500 subscriber mark by the end of the year. Currently sitting at 442, so uh, give me a hand guys. So overall, I thought the show was, was really good. Uh, this is the first show from the Las Vegas tapings. Crowd looked to be of a decent size. A little light up by the stage where the uh, they have a couple rows of seats, similar to what they did in New York where they had the little pit area. But outside of that, like I said, the uh, crowd looked to be of decent size. For the most part, they were into the show. We'll see how the rest of the tapings go. This should bring us all the way up to homecoming, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure what their plan is for December, if we're going to get those two weeks like they've been doing previously, where we kind of get recaps and best of episodes of the year. So we open the show with Tessa Blanchard versus Ray Lynn. Uh, we are told that Ray Lynn is a rise competitor by either Josh or Don. Uh, really, really like the use of enhancement talent. It really helps put over the roster, and none of the roster members end up having to take a loss. Um, I did like what I saw from Ray Lynn. Pulled out a couple nice moves. Had a decent showing against the Knockouts champion. Uh, I did notice that the camera seemed to be jumping a lot during this match. I don't know if it was the, the way they edited it because they weren't happy with things, but it probably happens an awful lot. But this one just really stood out to me. Um, actually, I kind of noticed it throughout the night as well. Uh, Tessa obviously goes over with the buzzsaw. Taya comes out. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. Tessa cuts a promo after the match saying that she is better than Taya, and she says that Taya will never be anything more than Johnny Impact's wife. This brings out Taya. She has new entrance music. Uh, kind of makes sense. Her gimmick has changed. No more robe. No more uh, whatever they were going for. I kind of forget, like a Game of Thrones type deal. Um, so that makes complete sense. Glad they changed it. Seems a little more fitting now. Taya comes out, says that she's talked to Impact Management, and a Knockouts Championship match has been set for homecoming between Tessa and Taya. So this has been going on since a little before Bound for Glory. It'll be interesting to see how they stretch it out over the next month and a half, as we've seen two matches between the two women. Last match, obviously, not having a finish because uh, Tessa decided to punch the referee in the face. So we go backstage, and Falaba and KM have made it to Vegas KM pulled some strings and got them a match against LAX tonight. Obviously, they say if they beat LAX, they get a tag team title shot. And if they have gold, they will be able to get Scarlet. Ba is so excited by this that he falls over and faints. This is it. You set up a match. You had a reason to set it up. That's all I ask for. Oh, this, this, this was a really good um, segment. So we see backstage. I guess it was backstage wherever they shot it. Desmond Xavier, Zachary Wentz, and Trey Miguel are doing a parody of that 70s show, the opening with um, where they're all sitting around and smoking, getting high. Uh, laugh track is going, and it just it, it was just so good. It seemed like all these guys were just having a hell of a time, and I think somebody posted up on Twitter saying this seems exactly how a conversation between all three of these guys were going. Like, they were talking about Desmond Xavier's Super X Cup win and a bunch of other stuff. But, I mean, this is something that wrestling definitely needs. It's just just them having fun, and that's what it's all about. It's loose feeling, you know, and not everybody's not uptight, walking on eggshells. I liked it. When we see a th preview saying the Rascals will be coming in two weeks to Impact Wrestling, I've been talking about signing these guys for a while. I'm really glad they're brought in. We have seen them brought in for a match. I think they were against OVE. Um, but that was a one-time deal then. Now it seems like they're here to say, good job, Impact. Good job. Definitely bright spots there. Um, and we'll see. Um, it should be interesting since they don't have a much of a tag team division right now. I mean, will these guys be going up against enhancement talent? Will they be going up against roster members? We don't, we don't know. We will see. But up next, we have a tag team match, KM and Falaba versus LAX. This match was a lot of fun. They did a good job. Santana and Falaba had a really good back and forth. Santana made Falaba look like a million bucks. Santana is going to be a huge star one day. 
I mean, I think Ortiz is going to be as well, but if they go the singles route, I could see Santana really making a career for himself. Uh, they they ended up making the match very competitive. KM and Falaba really working together well. I think they noted it on commentary the first time they seemed to be on the same page. However, at that point, I think Santana pushed KM into Falaba. Falaba tumbles over the top rope to the outside. LAX hits a couple double team moves and then hit a moonsault leg drop combo for the win. So, not a surprise there. Uh, it's a shame KM and Falaba didn't get the win. I, I would like to see them kind of give them a push. The crowd loves them. They're hilarious. I wish they would do their own YouTube series, kind of like uh, we have... With Rosemary and Allie, I think I think it would be hilarious. They post a couple of videos on YouTube of their, or uh, I should say on Twitter, of them just riding along together. And it looks like they're having a hell of a time. Um, I think actually KM posts a video of Falaba sleeping on the plane to Las Vegas. So we go backstage, and Mackenzie is interviewing Heather Monroe, and she is going to face Sue Young later on tonight. So she runs her down. Kiara walks up and says that you're underestimating Sue and what she is capable of, and she tells her just to be careful out there. So this was good. I like that they were, you know, adding the storyline of Kiara and Sue Young along with the uh, newcomer. Good stuff. So we see Scarlett. I think she was in the parking garage. She gets berated by a couple of crazy fans. One says he is there to protect her, and then Scarlett tells him to follow her, and we will see that fan later on in the evening. Uh, we see LAX backstage, and they're talking about their victory over KM and Falaba. They were kind of joking back and forth. Uh, Santana asks about the OGs. Conan said, I told them not to, or I told you not to mess with the bosses. You see what happens. He says, we will never see the OGs again. This was rumored. It was said that the OGs weren't going to be at the tapings. Um, I kind of expected uh, Homicide and Hernandez not to be there anymore. They kind of did their job, literally. Uh, but they came in, did what they had to, and left. Uh, I'm not. I'm a little surprised that King didn't stick around. I mean, tapings aren't obviously over; they're just beginning. But uh, we could technically see him in like a backstage skit. Um, but then LAX says, since they're fighting champions, they want to give the Lucha Brothers a title shot. And Conan says, not now. So we will see where this transitions. I would assume this will probably lead to a. <laughs> Uh, tag title match, most likely at homecoming between these two teams, which should be a fantastic match, but uh, we'll see how the build goes. Uh, then we get an GWN flashback, and this is actually a relevant one. It was LAX versus OVE from Bound for Glory 2017. We saw the debut of Sammy Callahan. Um, the only thing that I really didn't care for here was the transition to the flashback. It was just like really weird and abrupt. It just kind of came out of nowhere. But at least we got current stuff, and then even the segment, or out of the uh, flashback into the next segment was kind of weird as well, because when we see Seidel and Ethan Page backstage, Ethan hypes up Matt Seidel's match with Johnny Impact later on in the evening, and then Seidel cuts a promo on Johnny, you know, third eye stuff and whatnot. He always does a good job with it. Uh, then we get a commercial advertising homecoming, tickets go on sale Monday, or at least VIP tickets, I think. Uh, then we see the Desi Hit Squad enjoying the outdoors. They are talking about Indian food, and this how, somehow transitions into Thanksgiving talk by Rohit. Obviously, Thanksgiving is next Thursday. Gama runs down America at this point, and then Gama says that they are going to ruin Thanksgiving. Then we get the announcement that next week will be the second annual Eli Drake Turkey Trot. And uh, I think later on in the evening, they announced that it's going to be Team Fala versus Team Eli. Should be good. I enjoyed last year's basically because it was a whole episode around Eli Drake, and how can you not like that? Um, so I'm kind of glad they keep with tradition. It's supposed to be fun. Granted, it's going to be from 10 to midnight on Thanksgiving, so I don't know if people are going to be out shopping or they're just going to be uh, sleeping on their couch. So then we have Eli Drake comes out, and he says that the lawsuit was just used to lure Joseph Park in to take Abyss out. Uh, he says, obviously, he is the last of the dying breed. He then cuts a really good promo. He kind of reiterates what he said last week, and he said last week was the first uh, part of his mission to get rid of garbage and wrestling. This brings out Tommy Dreamer. Eli runs him down, and then Tommy Dreamer runs him down, calling him a skinny jean millennial, and he is ruining the business. Um, 
so it's funny that we heard similar rhetoric from the WWE with Ronda Rousey calling Becky Lynch some sort of millennial. But the difference here is that it's not a millennial calling another millennial a millennial. This was actually a veteran, you know, someone who's older calling someone younger a millennial. It actually made sense in this context. But uh, so that was good. And it was nice to see Eli Drake have a back and forth with somebody else who's very capable on the mic. Uh, You know, Dreamer cut a typical face promo saying it was all about the people and stuff like that. And then he kind of talked about everybody paying their dues regardless. Uh, Obviously, Eli says that I struck a nerve and then that and that Dreamer struck a nerve with him. So Dreamer challenges him to a fight. Eli accepts, throws his jacket out and then just rolls out of the ring and leaves. So, you know, Eli fights when Eli wants to fight. So, I mean, as long as this match doesn't happen at homecoming, I'm fine with it. Uh, so, yeah, it was it was good, it, at least giving Eli something to do. And like I said, somebody kind of on the same level on the microphone that actually uh, he can have a back and forth with. So it, it's nice because Eli Drake is actually into this. Uh, he's said that that's how he feels. So you bring that into storyline and... It makes sense to do it. Uh, We go backstage, and Alicia is in with Moose, and I guess a floozy, as she called her, or a tramp, or hussy, or whatever, uh, and tells him that he needs to leave because Eddie is coming here, and she isn't sure what he is going to do. Moose says he isn't worried. He will just call 911, tells her she needs to handle her husband, or else he will. So we're still continuing with this. I believe one of the Twitch specials, or One Night Onlys, I think it's moose and edwards in a street fight or something like that um i'll figure that out later on um let's see oh we see the referees backstage and they are talking about what happened with uh, tessa last week i forget the referee's name but he's the one that always refs the tessa matches and they made a uh, reference to that last week uh, but, you know, they said, oh, maybe Eli Drake was onto something here with this unsafe work environment. And at this point, Scarlett walks up and does her thing, talks to each ref. And then uh, she says the last one, she says, there's nothing, nothing sexier than power and authority and a man that is able to flex that authority. And then she leaves. So there's that. I'm still interested to see where we go from here. It's uh, I don't know if they're going to reveal her talent search winner at homecoming or on the tapings or what the end game better be good here so then we have matt seidel versus johnny impact talk about a match happening just to happen uh this was a really good non-title tv match really good showing for the former x division champion matt seidel very even back and forth throughout the whole match johnny was going to set up for starship pain Ethan Page, obviously on the outside with his third eye brethren. He pulls Matt Seidel out of the ring. Johnny goes, runs, hits, jumps over the top turnbuckle to the outside, hitting a corkscrew crossbody onto uh, Ethan Page. It was a really nice spot. They go back and forth some more inside the ring, Seidel and Johnny, that is. And eventually Johnny puts him away with Starship Pain. Uh, After the match, Killer Cross comes out. Crowd is obviously chanting for Killer Cross. I believe this is his hometown. That's what they said. Uh, Cross says that, you know, you defeated me fair and square. He says, hey, he may be mistaken. He may not, they may not be the catalyst for change, but he says Johnny may be. He says that since Johnny has the title around his waist, everybody in the back wants a piece of him and that title. He says, but not him. At final hour, he made him a believer. And uh, Cross says to Johnny, when you need that assistance, and you will, call him. Cross extends his hand. Johnny goes past his hand, grabs the mic, and says he doesn't trust him and doesn't want him anywhere near his him or his family. So the answer is no. Um, they kind of just wasted a good match between Johnny Impact and Matt Seidel. No reason for it. You could have just used it against enhancement talent since the whole point of this was to bring Killer Cross out and have the confrontation between the two of them. Um, I wouldn't think this is over with, um, but toward the end of the night, it seems like it is, but I I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see. Uh, we go backstage and we see Jordan Grace working out. Katarina comes up to her and congratulates her on her win. Uh, Katarina wants to team up. She says, you know, with the two of them being on even footing or we're saying they, they were even, if it was another night, she could have beaten her. Then Jordan says, all right, in two weeks, uh, we will have a rematch. There's that. Then we get a 
preview for the BCW 25th anniversary and one night only show, which debuts tonight, Friday, uh, November 16th on the Global Wrestling Network. Uh, then we see Eddie. He shows up to the arena and he goes and attacks Moose. All of a sudden, we see a couple guys in, uh, I guess they were in doctor's outfits. Um, I guess scrubs, more or less. They go, they grab Eddie. Looks like one takes, you know, stabs him with a needle to calm him down, knock him out. And it seems as if Alicia has had Eddie Edwards committed to a mental hospital. So um, this is the point where he's now being committed to a mental hospital. Let's let's run down the list of all the things that have happened. And this is the point where we call and have Eddie committed. Um, so, yeah, th I guess this feud is not over with. Uh, then we have Sue Young versus Heather Monroe, which we saw Heather hyping the match with Sue Young. It seemed like the crowd was pretty dead for this match. I'm wondering when it was taped. You know, if you have a big match, the crowd kind of gets taken out of it. It makes sense. Uh, Monroe got a little bit of offense in, but Sue made pretty quick work of her, hitting the panic switch and then making her tap out to the mandible claw. Kiara comes out when uh, Sue won't release the mandible claw. Allie then comes out. She's got new music. She's in touch with the dark side. She gets in the ring, kind of looks at Kiara. And at this point, Sue gets back in the ring, attacks Kiara, and uh, Allie kind of just looks at her. And then we see Allie and Sue Young hand in hand leaving together. So it seems like we know where Allie's allegiance is. Um, I really enjoyed this. I thought they did a good job, obviously, using enhancement talent just to get Sue an extra victory. Transitions into our first real look of Allie embracing the dark side. And you know what? They're really doing a good job giving us little by little each week, building this up, because we, got, we know it's going to be huge once everything comes to a head but like i said i'm looking forward to whatever the end game is here it seems like they're really really extending ali's character i mean being a baby face or a super baby face i guess in ali's position there there's only so much you can do you know there's only so much longevity with a character like that but they're really doing a good job with this so i can't wait to see where they go with this and then we have our main event brian cage versus sammy callahan x division championship obviously ove is ringside i really hate that they announced the chris brothers as ove all three members are ove all together i'm sorry i had to have to say that um because i think the announcer had mentioned that then they kind of need a consistent ring announcer i, I feel like it changes every set of tapings because I'm sure they use a local one. But it just seems like there's always trouble somewhere along the line. I think if they kept that, you know, the same person going along would be a little better. But, I mean, that's a little minor gripe. Um, obviously, the Chris brothers get involved. Dake, Dake. Dave grabs Cage's leg. Then Jake argues with the referee. Referee throws both men out. And then we see Cage... And Callahan on the outside, I think Callahan went to do a uh, somersault off the apron onto Cage on the outside. Cage catches him, suplex him on the outside. We go to commercial. We come back from commercial, and we missed a pile driver on the apron and some physicality between the two of them on the outside. Kind of an odd spot to cut out. It could have cut something else out of the show, so we could have gotten this whole match. Um, but Callahan looked really good, uh, reversing a lot of Cage's arsenal. But that seems like how they book a lot of matches where a guy gets a decent amount of offense versus Cage. It's just reversals rather than them getting uh, moves on him. But I guess it makes sense because Cage is such a huge guy. Uh, we do get a lot of back and forth between the new two men, getting a couple near falls. Callahan locks in the ankle lock at one point. And I don't know, it kind of looked funny because Callahan is a much smaller guy than Brian Cage. So just him kind of holding his leg, it just looked funny to me. Uh, Cage obviously eventually able to get out of it, grabs the bottom rope, um, Cage eventually hits a powerbomb and puts him away with the drill claw, really good match for, for a TV match, um, Callahan looked good, they did a good job booking him for this match considering he was pretty much by himself for the majority of it, so after the match, Brian Cage grabs the microphone, he says homecoming, January 6th, Option C, coming after the world title, drops the X-Division title in the ring, and leaves. Crowd didn't seem too phased by this, while it was a pretty big announcement. Um, 
I don't know how I feel about this. Just because Cage was talking so much about wanting to make the X Division title more important than the world title. Um, we had a lot of complaints about the way the Bound for Glory main event was booked with Johnny Impact and Brian Cage. It kind of just happened. And that's kind of how this feels right now. Like, don't get me wrong, it's going to be a fantastic match between the two of them. But it just kind of feels like it's just happening at this point. Plus, I really think it would have been good for Cage, you know, somebody to get the rub from Cage. I mean, I still feel like Cage still needs some more character work before he gets slid into that main event picture. I mean, losing Austin Aries, they kind of probably had themselves in a corner unless this whole thing is a work, which we still don't know. Um, as far as the vacated X Division title, I would hope they would have like a Super X Cup style tournament where the finals obviously take place at homecoming. Champion is crowned there. Um, as long as they do that, uh, I'm okay with things. Uh, it should be interesting to see who they have as X Division competitors considering their roster is kind of uh, depleted of that kind of talent. Um, I don't know. just seems like they were kind of booked into a corner with Cage because they want him to look strong and not have to lose the title, but then want him to go up to the world title, because we all knew that's where it was coming. Once Brian Cage debuted, and they made such big hype about him, we knew he was going to be a future world champion. It was just a matter of time. Um, but it seemed like, in this case, they were using the X Division Championship as a mid-card championship, which kind of, like I said, maybe they're going to give it a fresh start. That's what Roe from the Impact Lounge and I were talking about, and he kind of just said maybe... Maybe they're going to give it a fresh restart with the X Division title. Hopefully go to somebody more fitting in that division and not using it as a mid-card. Like I said, they should have just used the Grand Championship as a mid-card. Hell, maybe have Austin Aries come back with that belt and use it again. But we will see. Right now, I don't know how to feel about this. Hopefully the build throughout the next, the next couple of weeks toward homecoming makes me feel a little better about this get into it a little more but we have the world title and the knockout championship match set for homecoming which takes place in a little over a month and a half so that is all i have for you guys today thanks for checking out my review i don't know if i'm going to have a video up tomorrow i'll definitely be back sunday with a viewership report and until next time don't forget to like share and subscribe thanks guys bye did you like that video if so click here to check out more great content Thank you for supporting the Clock Cleaners Podcast.